bread when I'm hungry and warm. When the battle is raging, it's my faithful soul, sheltered from life's troubled storm. It's a light on my pathway and a lamp to my feet. When the world gets so dark, you can't see. And I'm not paying changing one word that it says, but it sure made a change in me. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand, it's true from beginning to end. It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. Just to hold in my hand It reminds me that I owe a great debt To all of the martyrs who went to the stake And quoted with their dying breath Now it's critics are many and believers are few But one thing i found to be true If you find when you read it that there's something wrong there's something wrong with you. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand is true from beginning to end. There's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now it keeps me from sin. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand is true from beginning to end. It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it, now keeps me from sin. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand. Or you can get one anyway. They were revising that, so just keep that in mind. 
Yes, we're going to be revising that this year as well. So, um, or updating it, I should say. Right. Um, and somebody's going to have a birthday this week too. Um, it's going to be 87. Doug? Not this Doug. Doug Seidel. Somebody else is having a birthday. Somebody else? Clarence. Clarence? Ah! Okay. Karen today? Oh, happy birthday, Karen. Okay. Well, you know, there's one thing that's um, known about the human race. We all get older. <laughs> and the Bible tells us it's appointed unto man wants to die. And then the judgment. And so, with that in mind today, not to be a downer or anything, <laughs> but the reality is that we all have to face that. We all have to face it. And it's up to us to make it right with the Lord. To repent of our sins and to ask forgiveness and to follow his word. That's, that's what our responsibility is. And so we need to live the way the Lord wants to live. And his word is full, absolutely chock full of ways to live for him. All we have to do is read it. But that's our responsibility. Okay, let's stand first and sing, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Have Thine Own Way. And then we will pray.
Help us, Lord, to find your will and then to do it. For each one of us, Lord, has a calling in this world. Each one of us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to know you and what you want from us. Just now I pray, Father, that you would be with each one of these prayer requests that we've made already this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you touch people and you heal people. Sometimes, Lord, healing comes by going home. Sometimes healing comes through a medical mirror. But, Lord, you heal us in your way and follow your will. Lord, help us to do the same, to follow your will. Pray that you would be with Terry Dunn, Tammy Dunn, and I pray, Father, that you would be with the neighbors. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do, for all that you mean to us. Be with all the sick, Lord, for many people have needs, Lord, that they don't even voice. And that's okay. But you know. You already know who they are. And we thank you for that, Lord. To be all-knowing, all-wise, and everywhere at once. We don't know how you do that, Lord. It's beyond our comprehension. But that's okay. Because as this song says, we are the clay. To be molded in your way. Help us, Lord, each one of us to follow your way. This day, throughout this service, Lord, be with every word and every song that is sung. May it touch hearts and speak to lives today. Lord, as this broadcast goes out to around the world, I pray, Father, that somewhere, someone would hear from you and take it to their heart. And follow you. We thank you, O Lord, for sending your Son Jesus to die on the cross for us. That we can serve you, Lord. Help us to do that this day and every day. Bless Pastor Chuck, Lord, as he speaks to us later. Thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We will sing praise him, praise him. This is a joyful song, so it's going to move a little bit.
Jesus. Do you? Yes. Praise the Lord.
We thank you, O Lord, again for this opportunity to praise you, to thank you, to give you glory. We love you, Lord. Bless this offering, Lord. Bless the giver and the gift. And may it be used to build your kingdom so that souls will be one to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Change your mind. 
Let me read to you a couple of verses that we've talked about the last few weeks that help me get into this a little bit. Romans 12, verse 2 says, I don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person, changing by changing the way you think, and then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. We've talked about this in terms of God transforming us, changing us uh, to the way we think, the way our mind works. We often say, as you think, so you are. And so it's changing your mind, uh, changing the way you think. And 1 Corinthians 2.15 is another one we've talked about, uh, 2.16. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach Him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. And so we've talked about trying to understand how Christ operated, and how we understand His mind, and as we copy His mind, as we think about the way in which He thought about things, about life, about death, we too might think about that and copy Him and think like he thought. So here's a question for today. How do I change my mind? How do I change my mind to have the mind of Christ? How do I change my thinking to have thinking like Christ? How does that work in my life and your life? This is important for us because as we think, so we are. You see, God is more interested in changing our mind than changing our circumstance. God is more concerned about changing our mind than changing our circumstance. So for example, have you ever met someone who is going through a very tough time, and yet their attitude is very positive? And they're going through an illness, and it's a devastating illness. And you talk to them and they are very positive and very upbeat about their life, even though they go through a difficult time. What that means is that they have changed their mind. They have a mind of Christ. They're able to say that I believe in Him and I have power to trust in Him and I can trust in Him even though my life is very difficult at this time. You see, God always wants to change our mind and not just our circumstance. Let's begin by looking at three ways in which we need to remember this on a daily basis. We're getting very practical with this message this morning. Three ways in which we think about our life on a daily basis and how we can change our mind by having the love of Christ in our life. These three things that I'm going to tell you are all F words. We start with letter F. They are, first word is feed. Feed. Jesus said in John 8, 32, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now you've probably heard that verse before, you know the truth, the truth sets you free. Did you know that Jesus was talking about himself? He's talking about himself. He is the truth. And the Bible is filled with truth. There is, for example, a way to, way to think about this. The Bible says, or someone has said that in the Bible, there is what is called a golden thread. From beginning, creation, to Revelation, the end of time, and future coming of time. And that golden thread is found throughout the Bible. He's predicted him here, Old Testament. He comes, the New Testament. And he, and we live in that message of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. There's a golden thread that goes throughout the scripture. And that golden thread is the truth. Nothing varies from that truth. We may come, and this may happen to God's people here. They go down, 
they go up, they go down, they go up. He comes, because people believe in him, they don't believe in him. They go up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, and it goes up. But there is the one golden thread throughout the scripture, and that is the truth of the scripture, as the truth becomes Jesus Christ, and the truth of knowing him as Lord and Savior. And so, for example, in Matthew 4, 4, when Jesus was tempted, by the devil in the wilderness. He said on this occasion, Matthew 4, 4, but Jesus told him, no, the scripture says, people will not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, of God. And so there is that word, that golden thread of Jesus Christ and the message of salvation in him. That's the soul food for life. That's the owner's manual for life, the Bible is. It speaks of Jesus that will set you free. There's a lot of truth today. I was trying to think of an example of truth today. There's all kinds of truth. One truth that I thought of is a fruit fly. You know the fruit fly that flies around your kitchen on your fruit? And you wonder what happened to that fruit fly? And you you know, I could tell you all the biological facts of why that fruit fly exists in your kitchen or on your fruit bowl. I give you all the biological true facts about that fruit fly. But you know, that fruit fly will not set you free. That fruit fly will not set you free. A lot of truth in the world that will not set us free. Only one truth will set us free, the truth of Jesus and his love for us in the Bible. Psalm 19, 197 says, Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. Thinking about God and his love for them. So the first thing we need to understand is we feed on something. We feed on the word of God all day long. That's feeding my mind on the truth of God in Jesus Christ all day long. Do we feed in the Word all day long? Probably not. Now we're in church, I guess you raise your hand, every hand will go up. But you no, know, we don't always feed on the Word of God all day long, do we? In fact, very honest, some of us, many days go by without feeding on the Word of God. But God's Word is to be studied from sun up to sun down, day in and day out, sunrise, sunset. How do you study the Word of God? Memorize it, write it down. Post-it notes around the house. I once told uh, my congregation that. I said, put post-it notes up around your house. And I kind of never invited to dinner at the house about two weeks later. And I asked where the bathroom was. And he said, down the hall, to the right. And you'll notice, you'll find it when you look at the, or the post-it notes. Post notes. Oh yeah, I have a scripture all over the house. So follow the yellow post house. Those notes down in the bathroom. The post notes. You have them all over the house today. You know, I've uh, done work at hospice care for many years, and I noticed something in hospice care that's interesting that the people who know the Word of God are able to recite the Word of God back to me. Now, that doesn't mean just reciting it. It means like, for example, to have like, Alzheimer's disease. And while they won't know anything else about anything else, they don't know the Word of God all the time. And they'll be able to recite to me. I remember a Baptist lady that I was ministering to 
here in the Phoenix area, and she was in uh, bedridden, basically. And I go to visit her, and I would ask her uh, about her life, and she didn't know very much, and she would say things here and there and everywhere. And then when I asked her, I would say, well, let's say some scripture. And I can tell you right now that she was sharper than a tack when it came to that word. In fact, we'd say something like 23rd Psalm, and she would say that perfectly. So perfect. I had a hard time following her. And we'd recite that together, and she would be ahead of me. And so much so that I'd say, I think to myself, do I have the Alzheimer's? <laughs> I was slow getting it out. She could say it. But what does that say to us? And by the way, during that time we'd share scripture together, her whole mind would change. Her heart would change. Her love of life would change. Her love to Jesus Christ would change because she remembered scripture and she could know scripture. And so feed on the word of God. Be creative in the ways in which you can know the word of God. Put a Bible by you somewhere where you sit all the time and have the Bible ready to be open anytime to read and glance at it. Even if it's one verse, not a whole section necessarily, but even if it's one verse, that you look at, one verse that you remember, one verse for you. Let me give you an example of that in the scripture, and that's King David. And David was going through a tough time. He was pursued by enemies. Enemies were around him. He was hiding in the caves. He was going from one place to another. He was afraid of everything that was going on in his life. And yet he would write in Psalm 119, verse uh, 95, Though the wicked hide along the way to kill me, I will quietly keep my mind on your law. You look at things in the world, it's very easy to get discouraged in the world in which we live. You think of the newspaper, you see the news on the internet, you listen to the radio, you listen to watch news on TV, you're going to get discouraged. Sometimes we feel hopeless, and we look at the world as being hopeless. We need to keep our mind on the truth, the truth of God and His Word. Change our mind, to change our mind from worry to fear, and worry and fear to security and comfort. So feed on the Word of God. Feed on the Word of God. Second word is be free. Free. Your mind needs to be liberated. Your mind needs to be delivered. Too often our minds become captive to the thoughts and the ways of the world. Listen, I want to repeat that again. Too often our minds become captive to the thoughts and the ways of the world. This happens to all of us because we have an enemy inside of us. And the enemy is called the old sinful nature. Have you heard the phrase, your own worst enemy? Yes. That's the old sinful nature. Romans 7, 23 says, I see in my body a principle at war with the law of my mind, taking me captive to the law of sin that dwells inside me. Do what Paul says. He says there's a battle going on. There's a battle going on. A battle between my life, the law of sin, and my mind that wants the holy captive. So have you ever seen things like, ever said things like this? I just can't get, I can't get this out of my mind. Or, I keep doing the stuff I know I should not be doing. Or, I know this, I know this 
is not good for me, but I'm going to do it anyway. What does that tell us? That there's a battle going on. There's a battle for my mind, the battle the way I think. That's the old sinful nature that tries to take over in our life, that causes bad habits and self-defeating thoughts and wants to take us down. The scripture said that. Listen very closely. Romans 8.5. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the spirit think about the things, about things that Spirit, please the Spirit. Notice two words there, dominated and controlled. Watch us closely. To be dominated by something is to pay, is to try to make you do something sinful, in this case. To be dominated by something is to try to make you do something sinful. But to be controlled by something, in this case the Spirit, is to let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you to what pleases Him. If you're dominated by something, you do something only to please yourself. That's sinful nature. But if you're controlled by the Spirit, you think about things that please the Spirit. You think about things that please God. Think about how to live for Him, how to serve Him, how to love in His name. That's to be controlled by the Spirit. That's to be free in Him. There's another enemy that same thing it happens to us besides the old nature, and that is Satan. In 16, uh, Matthew 16, verse 23 says, Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are dangerous to trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God. This has always intrigued me, this particular verse. Peter is talking to him, but Jesus sees behind Peter and says, Satan, you are trying to set a dangerous trap for me. See, Jesus knew that it wasn't Peter, but it was what was motivating Peter in his mind, in his heart, in his life. And there was Satan at that point. He wants to change your mind, Satan does. He wants to move you in a different direction than what God desires in life. It's very simple. That's the way it operates. That's the way he operates. And he does it because he wants, your, wants to ruin your relationship with God, with Jesus Christ himself. Now remember, though, that Satan can only tempt you to do that. Look very carefully. Satan can only tempt you to do that. He can only try to influence your life. The moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, he is there to plant the evil thoughts in your mind, in your heart. But he can only tempt you to do that. Another enemy that we have in this world, in this life, is the world. The world has its values, and the values are constantly and opposite of, to God, what he wants. Advertisers know that. Advertisers, advertisers like the world's values. So do movies and TV and celebrities and even TikTok cause you to think that way. Most everybody and most everything is all about you and think about you and you are most important. Nothing new. First John 2.16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of this world. This is nothing new. Already in the scripture, it can do that. 
You see, that's of the world. Uh, first, Second Corinthians 10, 33 through 5 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pre pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. In other words, we're in a wrestling match. And we've got to pin down the opponent. The mental battle is real. Watch this verse 4. They have the divine power to demolish strongholds. What's a stronghold? What's a stronghold in this world? A stronghold is, very simply, a lie that I believe. A lie that I believe. Anytime you believe a lie, all lies come from Satan. So Satan is behind it, like he was behind Peter. So he's behind all lies. Anytime I believe a lie about myself, it's a stronghold. Anytime I believe a lie about the world, about the future, about the past, the present, that's a stronghold. Anytime we believe a lie about money, sex, or power, or materialism, that's a stronghold. A stronghold can be my personal attitude. Anytime I worry and try to get somewhere to worry, it's a stronghold. I know people in life who have had resentment and envy and pity and self-conceit and even ego issues. They're all strongholds. It's a lie of belief about myself. But there's good news. We have the power to demolish the strongholds. We have power to demolish anything that would try to make us believe a lie. We have the power to overcome. In fact, it says, and the verse says, we take captive and we bring it, make it obedient to Christ. We take captive of the thing. We got one, it's under control by the Spirit who works within us. We take captive to the principle of the lie. There's a war language, it's a war language. There's a war going on in your life and mine. And so we take captive, we control, we conquer whatever is there that would ruin us. And we make it obedient to Christ. We make it obedient to Christ. We make our thoughts obedient to Christ. We make our will obedient to Christ. We make our life obedient to Christ. You see, that's the way we live in submission to Jesus Christ. Look at the world. Look at the world in which we live. And why are people so ineffective and defeated in life? The reason why people are infected and defeated in life, some people, is that they've adopted the standards of the world. To give in those standards. The reason why people give in with sin, mental habits, and lifestyle is they've lost the battle for the mind. People have chosen to feed their minds with worldly thoughts rather than make my mind subject to God's thoughts in life. Listen to this very carefully. This is the crux of what we are suffering from in our nation today and in many parts of the world today. Listen again. People have chosen to feed their minds with worldly thoughts rather than make my mind subject to God's thoughts in His Word. So that's the problem. We listen, we think about and our mind is subject to what the world says our life ought to be like, not what God says our life ought to be like. Psalm 119, verse 112 said, I am determined to keep your decrees to the very end. I'm determined to keep your decrees to the very end. I think, like Christ, 
to keep his thoughts in my mind to the very end. Therefore, the third word is focus. Focus. I need to focus on the right things. And here are the right things that we focus on. Now these three things, I'm telling you, are not going to be rocket science. These three things I want to share with you are three basic things that we need in this life. Sometimes I'm afraid, even as Christians, that we think about all kinds of things in this life. We need to think about three basic things in life, in this life, no matter what goes on. Number one, think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. I want to change my mind. I need to throw out the old and replace it with something new every day, and that's Jesus. And I say every day. Some of us have been Christians and we've fallen the Lord for years and years. Decades, decades. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we need to focus on Him and focus on Jesus every single day. Think about Jesus. You are what you think. Think about Jesus. Second Timothy 2 8 says, Keep your mind on Jesus Christ. He was from the family of David and was raised from death, just as my good news says. Hebrews 1, 12, 3 says, think about Jesus. Think about Jesus' example. He held while on while wicked people were doing evil things to him. So not get tired of doing, get tired and stop trying. So think of Jesus all the time, and think of his love that's there for you. <laughs> Second thing, think about others. Think about others. We've been created that way. I often say this way and this way. Very simple. This way, God, my Father, who has loved me through his Son. And on the line that goes on to me, I remember that I'm loved through the Son, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, having come to me, I go out to the world in which I live. The neighbors and friends, I go out to the world and live the life that he wants me to live in that flow. Think about others, not only yourself. Some people said, don't think of the unholy trinity. You know, Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the unholy Trinity, me, myself, and I. That's the unholy Trinity. That's the way the world thinks. Even people sometimes think that way in the church. For example, I don't know if you've heard this before, but there's Farmer John's prayer. Farmer John, he's a believer, Farmer John's prayer. God bless me and my wife my son John Jr. and his wife, us four, no more. <laughs> See, think intentionally about others. Think intentionally about care and love as Christ loved others. Hebrews 10, 24, let us think about each other and help each other to show love and do good deeds. And then finally, and finally, Think about eternity. Think about eternity. Always think about eternity. Even though we live on this earth, always think about eternity. Not just because we don't know how long we have, but it's priceless joy and victory to always think about eternity. To know that I'm going there because Christ has won for me the opportunity to live with him forever in heaven. And what a joy that is. What a tremendous power that is. What a tremendous strength that is. Tremendous excitement that is. 
I will live forever with him in heaven. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Uh, I want to pause there for a moment. Help us understand that a little bit. Maybe you've heard people say about believers, they're so heavenly minded, they are no earthly good. Ever heard it before? They're so heavenly minded that they are of no earthly good. That's false. That's false. It's impossible to be so heavenly minded you're of no earthly good. If you really do it right, it's impossible to be heavenly minded and of earthly good. It's possible for someone to be so earthly minded they're not heavenly good. That's possible. But if you're heavenly minded, you're going to want to be earthly good. For example, a prime example of that is in America. In the early years in America, who built the hospitals? Who started the schools? Who began to start the colleges? Who had the mental health institutions? Who started the orphanages? The church. Believers. They did it. We did it. We were so heavenly minded, we were earthly good. We must remember that. We are heavenly minded, but the heavenly minded people, you and me, remember that we are heavenly minded to be earthly good, to share that love of the Lord Jesus Christ with others on earth. Believers in Jesus Christ, people who had the hope of heaven but hope to this earth, People of the hope of heaven still bring joy and hope to this earth. And so we feed on the word of God. We free our minds of evil thoughts and win the battle over sin. And we focus our minds on Jesus. Think as Jesus thought for our life. So, you want to change your mind? Be free. Think free. Be fed. Think fed. Be a people who focus. Think focus in your life. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, it's the simple message to love your son, Jesus, to think of this world in which we live and the people of this world, think of them and care for them, and to focus our attention every day on your care and love for us, and to think about eternity and life to come. It's so simple, Lord, yet so needed in this crazy world in which we live, we need to focus on you and your love for us and how that ever changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as we draw upon your power and draw upon your love, we can live our life in your service and service to you until that day when we join you in eternal glory and celebrate forevermore your love and your own presence in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's all stand, please. In Jesus' peace is where we need to, where we need to be today. 
peace of Jesus. And that peace of Jesus uh, comes through thinking about Him, obeying Him, and thinking about eternity. That's where we get the peace. We can have peace in our hearts if we think about those three things. What a great message this morning, Pastor Chuck. Thank you. Let's sing, My Peace I Give to You. This is the peace from Jesus that we need to give to others as well. My peace I give unto you. It's a